Hey everyone, if I asked you this question, is high PSA, prostate specific antigen, a good thing or a bad thing? What would you say? See, high PSA or the blood test, they draw men's blood to find out if they have high PSA. They measure that PSA and if it's high, there's a suspicion that that person may be developing prostate cancer. So is it a good thing or a bad thing to have high PSA? You know, most of you may have thought to yourself, you know, that would be a bad thing. You know, I want to argue the opposite. I want to say that it's a good thing. And here's why. I was recently reading this article here. Uh, it comes from the British Medical Journal from 1999, as well as published in the National Cancer Institute. The journal from the National Cancer Institute in 1999 as well. It says that high PSA levels show that the body is fighting cancer. What they found with the research is they actually found that PSA, the antigen itself, inhibited angiogenesis, or the development of new blood vessels to cancer cells. They found that PSA had an anti-angiogenic and anti-metastatic property to it. So the higher your PSA, the more anti-metastatic or the spread of cancer your body, the more resistant to the spread of cancer your body becomes with the higher your PSA is. You know, when I was reading this, I was blown away at how intelligent God's design is. Because get this, that if you have cancer developing in your prostate, those cells start to multiply and they put pressure on your prostate. Upon pressure on your prostate, more PSA is produced. So that's why prostate cancer is a relatively slow growing cancer and your body was naturally designed that if it develops cancer in that area, your body has a greater potential to resist it because of what it's going to cause. Another way to raise your PSA, men, is having sex. So you know what? If you have prostate cancer, go ask your wife. You want to fight cancer tonight and you want to have sex so she's not in the mood. You get a reason why to get her into the mood. Okay, anyway, but you know, they even went as far to say that they advise the administration of prostate specific antigen as a drug to augment or raise the natural body's production of PSA. So I was just blown away with that. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. What do we do in America? I mean, just like treating cholesterol levels. Are we treating the true underlying disease process in the body and eliminating the cause of the disease? No, we're treating symptoms. So here's the thing. Is what do we do? I just got into a conversation today with a patient of mine who is actually being treated for prostate cancer, and he was treated in the past, actually. They, they did a surgery, and then, because he still had PSA levels in his bloodstream, they then start applying radiation, which in itself causes cancer, to lower his PSA. They just keep saying, if we see any PSA in your bloodstream, we're gonna keep bombarding your body with radiation or drugs to lower that PSA. And next, they wanna do hormone drugs. You know what? We can just, we can actually combat high PSA, bombard the body with drugs, surgery, radiation, and drive that blood level into obliteration. But you know what? A dead man can't produce PSA. And in essence, they could achieve their goal by eliminating all PSA in your bloodstream. You know, that, that strong wording, I know, you probably are just sitting there saying, holy cow, is he saying that doctors are actually killing men by applying hormone drugs or radiation to treat the high PSA? Don't take my word for it. What I want you to do is take the word of Dr. Otis Webb Brawley, who is the Chief Medical and Scientific Officer and Executive Vice President for the ACS, the American Cancer Society. To get a position like that, you gotta be pretty darn intelligent and know a thing or two about cancer and the development of cancer and the treatment of cancer. So let's look at what he says in his book, How We Do Harm. A doctor breaks ranks about being sick in America. He breaks ranks and talks about how we're doing harm. So what he does in this, in this book, he actually says, and he argues, that widespread use of hormonal agents is causing men to die of cardiovascular disease, diabetes, before they would ordinarily die of prostate cancer. He goes on to say, 
that if we stop treating men with hormone drugs that suppress PSA, we would actually see more men die from prostate cancer. But he says that's a good thing. Because the men who would have been killed earlier by strokes and heart attacks caused by the side effects of their hormone drugs, those treatments, would now be living long enough to die of their prostate cancer. Now, am I saying no one should ever take seriously high PSA? No. You know, I understand that that's God's innate intelligence working against the cancer so that you can live a longer and healthier life. But what we need to do is ask the question, why is the PSA high? Get to the root cause of the disease process that's taking place in a person's body. And this is the thing. You can get to the root causes without the serious side effects and not treating symptoms, getting the root cause, by changing your lifestyle. See, Dr. Dean Ornish in Memorial Sloan Kettering Research Center, Cancer Research Center, found that men could actually reverse prostate cancer through major lifestyle changes. What are those lifestyle changes? Well, that's what we're gonna discuss in greater detail on October 27th at Marathon Chiropractic's Cancer Killers Seminar. Join us.